In this video, I get to go to one of my favorite places ever. It's been closed for a couple months, so I'm really excited. We get to see some really big birds, some really little birds, and a whole bunch of interesting stuff along the way. Come on, let's go check it out. Nothing quite like watching the sunrise on a nice cool morning. Finally, the sweltering heat of summer is long gone. The cooler temperatures up north have pushed a lot of migratory birds into the area. Let's go see what we can find. A great blue heron snatches something from the water. Gives it a quick rinse and swallows it down. All of the birds are very busy looking for breakfast and enjoying the sunrise. These blue winged teal ducks favor the shallow waters of the pond. It makes collecting vegetation from the bottom so much easier. It doesn't take long for the ducks to notice me and when they do, they take to the air. I really like the slow motion feature of the D850. It's pretty easy to see how this duck got its name. Look at that awesome green and teal color on the male's wings. That cool looking teal color is on both the male and the female. Here's a good shot of the female. Incredible looking birds. Oh, there's an otter right here. Oh my God, there's two of them. I know otters are cute and all, but they can be aggressive. So I was hesitant to get too close. I wanted to keep a safe distance, but at the same time, my curiosity was getting the better of me. I had to get a little bit closer. They're fighting. Time to see if I can get some good images of these two otters. From this first shot, it's a little difficult to see what's going on. It would appear that we just have a very dramatic otter who is possibly having a bad morning. My shutter speed wasn't quite fast enough to completely freeze the movement here, but I'll take it. The next shot reveals the real reason this otter is upset. Yes, that is another otter biting the back of the first otter's head. In this series of shots, we get to see some really nice close-ups of those massive otter teeth. Can you understand why I didn't want to get too close to these two? That's a lot of teeth. And what do you do after a confrontation? Well, you just shake it off. And you make sure your opponent isn't coming back for round two. Otters are totally awesome. There are always loads of little birds right along this tree line. Really cool ones too. I already see a bunch ducking in and around the bushes. I see the blue gray gnat catcher. That's cool. I'll see if I can get some pictures of them. They're so small and so fast, but they're really fun. Oh, he's right in the light too. Perfect. This is the blue-gray gnat catcher. This is one small bird that always flutters all over the place. They are only about four inches or 10 centimeters long, and they only weigh about five grams, but they are extremely incredible predators. They love to eat all sorts of insects. This one has spotted a few tasty morsels hiding on this tall blade of grass. Here, let's take a closer look so we can see what's on the menu. Ah yes, look at all those juicy little bugs. The blue-gray gnat catcher practically hovers in place while it picks all of these little insects off the grass. It does this in about two seconds. These are incredible little birds. I see some more little birds over here. Let's see what they are. This is the part of the video where you get to help me. I'm not great at identifying these little birds, so feel free to correct me in the comments if I make a mistake. This is a yellow rumped warbler. There were quite a few of these fluttering around the pine trees. And I believe this cool looking little bird is a pine warbler. I really like the yellow color on this bird. And this one, this bird is the mystery of the day. I really have no idea what kind of bird this is, um, being the time of year and the color, it's really hard to say. If you know, please leave a comment and let me know. And this last bird is another pine warbler, although I think it should be called a little golden puffball. Because look at that. It, just, it looks like a little ball of gold. And this is what happens when you get really close to a bird with the D850. It captures an absolutely incredible amount of detail. There's another otter laying up here in the sun in the middle of this path. It's looking right at me now. It's like taking a nap. This is my type of otter. Nothing like taking a nap in that warm golden sunlight. 
The D850 has an impressive dynamic range when you consider the Sleeping Otter shot was backlit. As a matter of fact, they all were. I guess the first position really wasn't comfortable enough. It's time to rearrange and warm up the backside. And then, as soon as I turned around, the otter stood up and gave me this look. You know, it's really awesome to be out there with all these really cool creatures. And man, over here on this lake, there are tons of little swallows just circling the surface of the water. It's really cool looking. Maybe I can get some pictures of them. They're almost impossible to photograph. Oh, there goes the otter. He just took off. Yeah, so he was just snoozing here on the path. Let's see where he was. He's got like a little bed of dirt. Check this out, this is cool. So he was laying right here, or she, in this nice smooth dirt spot. Check out all these swallows. They are incredibly difficult birds to photograph because they are so fast and erratic. Time to put the D500 into action and capture some of these birds in the air. With speedy, erratic little birds like this, you have to use a very fast shutter speed, the widest depth of field you can afford with your current lighting situation, and a good amount of luck. Luck was on my side because I managed to grab a few awesome shots of these little birds as they went screaming by like tiny jets. Shooting with a shutter speed of 1 4,000th of a second proved to be fast enough to capture these fast little birds. Did you notice how the light hits them and they have that really crazy iridescent blue color? Wow, these are super cool looking little birds and man were they fast and very difficult to photograph. A pair of sandhill cranes flew in as I was taking pictures of the swallows. I grabbed a few in-flight shots of these majestic birds with my D500. These are one of my favorite birds and I always enjoy spending time with them. I made a short documentary on a film of sandhill cranes in the same location. I'll put a link to that documentary here in this video and in the description below. Go check it out. It was an incredible experience. I really wanted to get some detailed close-up shots of these birds with my D850, so I walked around the pond in order to get the sun at my back. This is really important because if you can get the sun at your back, it will fully illuminate your subject. In this case, these beautiful sandhill cranes. I sat down about 12 feet or 4 meters from them and started shooting. I have taken a lot of sandhill crane pictures, but never, I mean never, have I seen such absolutely incredible detail. Look at all of the dirt and debris on this crane's beak, and wow, look at that fiery eye. Give me a second to pick my jaw up off the floor here. This is why I bought the D850. How about a nice head-on shot? I'll take it. Again, just loads of incredible detail. This is an interesting pose. And are those black hairs on the crane's head? It looks like it could be. I've never noticed that before. Another interesting pose and a good look at the inside of this crane's mouth. I really like the blue background in these shots, but this background looks much better. It's a little warmer, and those nice earthy tones really complement the incredible colors on this bird. I also really like how one bird is in perfect focus, but the other is blurred just enough to know it's there without taking away from the bird in the center of the frame. This creates a nice balance to the image, and this one I think is going to end up on my wall. Let's crop in for a closer look. Again, the amount of detail here is just nuts. This really opens a whole new world of photography. Here's a really nice shot while the crane was bugling. We get a really good look at the entire mud-covered beak and that flared throat. And one more shot of the same bird, but in this shot, it appears as if the tip of the bird's beak has been lightly covered in silver. Now, keep your eye on the bird's eye because I'm going to switch to a close-up of another crane. You can really see a difference by looking at the bird's iris or the orange color that surrounds the pupil. In three, two, one, go. Look at that eye. It looks almost like a sun. You can see all the little flares there around the middle. And you know something else? These birds really remind me of dinosaurs. Wow, they are hands down one of my favorites. Absolutely incredible. And just so you can see the detail a little better, Here's a close-up of that same eye. Look at that. That is just incredible. Time to see if I can find some painted buntings. 
But on the way back towards the tree line, we walked up on this large group of birds that all took off at once. I grabbed a few shots of the action as it unfolded so quickly, and I really like these results. There is just so much going on. Here, let's take a closer look at this explosive action. All of that water being backlit by the sun creates an amazing looking effect where you can just barely make out the wings in almost every state of flight. I used a shutter speed of one two thousandth of a second and it was enough to freeze all those water drops which helped create this really cool effect. In this last shot, the action in the foreground started to slow down a bit. Time to find those painted buntings. On my way back to the tree line, I grabbed the slow motion clip of this beautiful monarch butterfly, and then I caught a fleeting glimpse of green as a female painted bunting flew in for her photo shoot. All right, Mrs. Bunting, it's nice of you to show up for your photo shoot. We have some really good natural light, so let's see what we can do with it. Oh yeah, okay, that's a, that's a good pose. I like that. But you think you could turn your head so we can get an alternate profile shot? There you go. That's perfect. Now let's try the close-up. Ah, yeah, perfect. Nice job. Hey, can somebody see if they can get Mr. Painted Bunting on set? Oh, there you are, and as beautiful as ever. But this dark brooding look doesn't really work for you. Could you step out into the light a little bit, please? There you go. That's a little better. But we really need to show people all of your beauty. There, that's much better. Now everybody can really appreciate those wild colors. And now let's try the close-up. Okay, that's perfect. It's really easy to see why these birds are called painted buntings. They look like they have been hand painted. I wanted to see if I could get some shots with my D500, but the buntings wouldn't cooperate. They were done for the day. But this awesome bird flew onto the scene. This is a flycatcher. What type of flycatcher? I'm not sure. This is not a bird that is native to Florida. It's definitely a migratory bird, and it's one of three types. It's either a great crested flycatcher, an ash throated flycatcher, or a brown crested flycatcher. All three of these birds are known to make winter visits to Florida. So if you think you know which one this is, please feel free to leave a comment and let me know. Either way, it's a really cool looking bird. Thanks for coming along. I had a great time. It was an incredible experience as always. Click that thumbs up. That's what happens, what can you do? As always, click that thumbs up. Um, subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. I got a whole bunch of cool stuff planned. Leave comments in the comment section below. Let me know what you thought of the video. I love hearing what everybody thinks of the video. And feel free to share the video. That's a huge help. And until the next time, see you later.